competition has taken notice. Oh, my God. Good luck keeping up with us, <laughs> amateurs. So to get that perfect barbecue, you use wood. Are you sure it's safe? Whatever. We put the lighter fluid on, strike the match, and... Oh. Should we call the fire department? That might be a good idea. Welcome to the Barbecue Central Show, the show where we talk about all things that are important in the world of barbecue. From big-name interviews with competitors on the barbecue circuit, grill manufacturers and pit makers, to advice on cooking brisket and ribs, you'll find it all right here on the Barbecue Central Show. Your host, Greg Rempe, is a backyard barbecue and grilling fanatic and loves to talk about his passion, which many of us share together. You can learn more about barbecue and grilling by visiting Visiting the website, thebbqcentral.com. Now, let's get in the smoke. Here's your program host, Greg Rempe. Welcome to the Barbecue Central Show. This is the show where we talk about all things important to the world of barbecue and grilling. Centralite has your life. I am your program host, Greg Rempe. You probably know by now, if you're any type of listener to this show, that we originate from the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame city, dare I say it, the barbecue capital of the North Coast right here in Cleveland, Ohio. Happy to have you aboard. Glad you could make room for the Barbecue Central show. Always happy to have you. Let me give you some contact information. You can email the show at any point if you want. It's on me, bbqcentralradio at gmail.com. You have a comment about the show, you have a show suggestion idea, whatever the case may be, shoot it over there, bbqcentralradio at gmail.com. Jam-packed show as always. Let me give you an idea of what will be happening here over the course of the show. Next segment will be joined by regular guest contributor. He is a food blogger, and he takes some great food porn shots of his finished dishes. And if you're any type of outdoor live fire cooker, really nothing is better to top off your complete meal by taking a high quality snapshot and then posting it on the internet. Sure, your wife or girlfriend or your kids might think you're kind of a kook for doing that, but we appreciate it, especially over at the Barbecue Central Forum where there is food porn aplenty. Nothing better than slaving over a hot barbecue pit or grill or whatever the case may be and then plate it up just like you're going to be sticking it in Food and Wine magazine, but then instead of submitting it to editor over there, you upload it and share it with everybody via internet on a lot of these barbecue forums. So I always appreciate the food porn. John Dawson, Patio Daddy O B B Q dot com is his food blog website. He'll be sharing two recipes with us that he has been working on here most recently, and they both are very delicious and better than that. They are both very easy to accomplish. John Dawson. Coming up next segment, segment after that, you know, we always talk about barbecue pits and what kind to get and grills and what kind to get, but we like to keep the options open. I want to give you all the information that's out there when it comes to wood-fired cookers. There's a guy out there in Los Angeles named Michael Gerard from Wildwoods Ovens, and he has a few different product lines that we're going to be talking to him about. He does have a wood-fired oven product line. They're like cast, and they're very cool. A lot of people putting these up in their outdoor patios and their gardens, and uh, some of them are actually probably putting them in their homes. I've always wanted to have a wood-burning oven in my home to cook on. I've seen those on some of the more expensive Food Network shows, and that's where they remain at the moment in my house on the television. But those are very cool. Plus, he also has started a line of Brazilian barbecues. These are becoming more and more popular. Maybe you've seen them around town, Brazilian barbecues, where they come to your table with these big skewers of beef and veal and whatnot and they kind of carve it off the brazilian barbecue skewer right there and it's very kind of primal and all that great stuff and he's got a line of brazilian barbecues that he wants to talk about so why not have them on especially if you're out there in the los angeles area he's kind of like your backdoor neighbor i know i'm sure he's got test kitchens all stuff we'll get into and that will be third segment so look for that probably around half past the hour Then we'll close out the show with one more segment. Going to go off the board completely. If you know the show at all, you probably already know where I'm going to be heading for the last uh, five or six minutes of the show. Again, John Dawson coming up next segment. Michael Gerard segment after that. And your emails as well if you're so inclined to write in and ask questions, comments, or show suggestions. BBQ 
Central Radio at gmail.com. Let's go ahead and quickly peruse the competition scene because we're drawing near to the end of the year, which means the points chase races for Team of the Year carrots are becoming ever so tightly. No more a better example than that than the Kansas City Barbecue Society. Last week, Rod Gray of Pellet Envy and I believe it was uh, Iowa Smoky D's were kind of in a tussle between one and two. Well, that's kind of changed. Rod Gray still sitting atop Pellet Envy as he did very had a very good showing this past weekend in Shelby, North Carolina at the Hog Happening. But he had an overall fifth place. Uh, some of the other teams that he has been competing against finished under him. But in the overall points chase, Rod Gray is at 2907, 2,907 points. I Smell Smoke, which I believe overtook Iowa Smokey D's from last week, is now in second place. They are only eight points behind. So I can only imagine that they're going to be running romp and ragged here over the next last few weeks of the competition season. Iowa Smokey D's in it as well, no less than 30 points, 35 points away from top position. Munchin' Hogs at the Hilton, well within striking distance, less than 100 points too. So look for the Kansas City Barbecue Society uh, top 10 to get as many competitions as they can in in order to firm up their chances of winning the team of the year over there for 2009. No big changes at Memphis Barbecue Network. Yazoo's Delta Q still one point over Jack's Old South, which would either signify that they haven't updated or that there were really no MBN competitions. And uh, Florida Barbecue Association, uh, no change there either. Rob Bagby of Swamp Boy still sits atop the leaderboard. And Forrest's Fine Foods still in second place. Rod looks like he actually, or Rob looks like he actually extended out his lead by a handful of points over the weekend. Uh, big championship for their Triple Crown series coming up in just about a month, December 11th and 12th. They're going to be doing their Triple Crown series. This is where your grand champion just happens to walk away with $3,000. That wouldn't suck. 2000 for a reserve. Even third place getting one grand. That, again, is coming up in just shy of a month in Florida. So if you're looking to to look at some competitive barbecue in the month of December and you don't want to do it in Cleveland, then maybe Florida is a better location that you want to take a look at. By the way, I got in a rub and a sauce that I have basically fallen in love with, and the maker of it is Smokin' Coles. The, The owner of that company has actually been on the show a couple times, that being Russ Cornett. He's weighed in on a round table of sorts. We've had him on with... He's one of the pit masters that does the Carolina pit master school as well. And his rub and sauce really, to me, kind of signify what I like in a rub and a sauce in the fact that they kind of work together. There's a lot of the similar ingredients and flavor profiles. So when you put your rub on and then I added the sauce at the end to kind of set that glaze, the flavors of the rub and the flavors of the sauce were working very well together. And I did kind of a roasted chicken using chicken thighs. And I'm telling you, some of the best sauce, some of the best rub that I have had in to the Barbecue Central Show studios and test kitchen in quite some time. So if you're looking, at least for my suggestion, on something new that you want to try out, why not try Smokin' Coals? You can Google that. I believe it's SmokinCoals.com or SmokinCoalsBarbecue.com. Quick reminder about the good folks at the Barbecue Guru. Makers of automatic pit temperature control devices, as well as a host of other products that make your barbecue and grilling life easier. They have four different kinds of automatic pit temperature controls. If you need something that just kind of keeps your pit at steady eddy temperature like a cruise control, they have the Nano Q. That's what it is. You want something that you can interface with on your computer where you can change your temperatures by clicking a mouse key? No problem. The CyberQ has you covered ProCom 4 wireless unit. You can range up to 600 feet away from your pit. Be wirelessly in control of it. See the readouts and make adjustments there. Then you have your DigiQ2 as well. Plus, they make a great line of cookers, too. They have the Onyx cooker. They have the Caldera Tallboy cookers. The, all these other accessory items that you should really check out. And you can do it two ways. You can go online and check them out at the thebbqguru.com. Or, if you want, you can call them toll-free at 800-288-GURU. 
Barbecue Bob Trudnack and Shotgun Fred and all those guys over there. More than happy to answer your questions. Again, it's 800-288-GURU, or you can look them up online, thebbqguru.com. Give me a short time out. When we come back, John Dawson of Patio Daddy BBQ. It's Rempy and you right here on the Barbecue Central Show. The future of barbecue is already here at thebarbecueguru.com. From the amazing guru that monitors and controls the temperatures of any charcoal, wood, or electric pit to the Caldera Tallboy Knockdown Smoker. Yes, it breaks down and stores flat, yet it's still a robust, sturdy, portable cooker and smokehouse. It also serves as an efficient temperature-controlled convection oven using wood or charcoal. The Tall Boy is designed to fit all catering pans and can be used as a warming oven. You can cook in any style you choose, like ribs, chicken, jerky, vegetables, smoked cheese, whatever you want. Take it to KCBS competitions and unload it from the truck of your car. The BarbecueGuru.com is where you'll find the Caldera 3-Bay Caterer. It's stainless steel and uses charcoal or sterno for chafing purposes. And it doubles as a three-bay sink or wash station with hot water and knocks down in seconds with no tools required for transportation and storage. The future of barbecue is here at thebarbecueguru.com. That's www.thebbqguru.com. Or call 1-800-288-GURU. Forget going from site to site to get all your barbecue and grilling supplies and make your first and final stop at fredsmusicandbarbecue.com. In the market for a new barbecue pit, we have all the big name brands like Big Green Egg and more. As a matter of fact, Fred's is staffed by eggheads and carries all the parts and accessories for the Big Green Egg. More of a pellet head, you say? Fred's is the pellet grill superstore with grills in stock from Traeger, Green Mountain, and Country Smokers from Louisiana Grills. Fred also carries smokers from Cook Shack, Bradley, and Weber as well, as well as a full lineup of charcoal grills. And once you're outfitted with your new smoker or grill, you'll find absolutely everything you need to make your barbecue or grilling experience a success. Fred is also the creator and distributor of Tasty Licks barbecue products, including their great line of rubs, spices, and sauces. you got to try them. You can also get your hands on a full lineup of marinades, accessories, lump charcoal, wood chips, pellets, chunks, and even the great grilling tools from Stephen Reichland of Barbecue U fame. Check Fred out on the web at fredsmusicandbbq.com or check out their fully stocked showroom in beautiful Shillington, PA. Get in the smoke. 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 It's the Barbecue Central Show. Once again, here's your host, Greg Rempe. All right, welcome back. It's the Barbecue Central Show. I'm your program host, Greg Rempe. This portion of the show brought to you by D-Dog's Barbecue Rub. You know, Central Lights, nothing sucks more than finding a great product on the Internet and realizing you have to pay shipping. Don't we all forget about that? Of course we do. Shipping sucks. So why don't you take that worry out of your own hands and get together with your own local mom-and-pop shop, someplace that sells the barbecue rubs and sauces in your hometown. Tell them to get in touch with Darren at D-Dog's Barbecue Rub. D-A-R-I-N at D-Dog's BBQ.com is the place to go. He will take it from there. You will have stuff locally stocked, and it'll be ready to go. As we all know by now, D-Dog's Barbecue Rub is better than ketchup, and nobody knows that better than my next guest. It's John Dawson from Patio Daddio Barbecue. John, how are you today? I'm great. Thanks for having me on again, Greg. Appreciate it. Well, appreciate you taking the time out to do it. And we have you on for a couple great recipes that you've been diligently working on. First is the classic barbecue chicken drumstick. Why don't you tell us about that? Well, the drumstick is kind of a lowly... Uh, old standby of barbecue and uh, I recently cooked a fundraiser to help send our Idaho team to the jack and I needed something that was pretty easy to cook for a massive amount of people but yet still was authentic barbecue so I just decided to do some really basic drumsticks Um, they turned out really well and actually the picture on the blog is from that actual fundraiser as it happened so um, I just decided to go ahead and post the recipe Um, it's nothing magical really um, again, it's just your basic old school uh, barbecued chicken drumsticks, and it really couldn't be any easier. I mean, it's I mean, there's what six ingredients in the whole thing. Do you get the drumsticks well, from uh, like from your grocer, or do you buy them like mass market willy up at some of the food clubs? Um, I bought them in uh, what were they like twelve or fourteen packs, something like that, and I had to buy 155 of them, so I just Yikes. bought massive quantities of them. This recipe is scaled for 12, but of course, as any recipe, you could ratchet that up. The seasoning is just two ingredients. Um, It's just whatever your favorite barbecue seasoning is. Um, If you don't have one, you can either Google just a basic barbecue rub, or I have a recipe on my blog. It's linked there in the recipe. Um, That's a really basic. um, It's actually my competition rub kind of kicked down a little bit. 
And then I have an eighth of a cup of Old Bay seasoning, which is kind of a secret ingredient for those of you who may have not heard of it or don't use it. It's just a really good way to, uh, especially for poultry, it just brings something really good to the party. I mean, it's got a ton. It's basically just a, a collection of, a, of seasonings that you would normally maybe put in a poultry seasoning anyway, bay leaf, and it's got some mace and some ginger, cardamom, cinnamon in it. So it's just a really good uh, additive for a normal, a basic rub to make it kind of tailored for poultry. So I use it a lot in competition. Right, I've seen it used a lot in like seafood boils and stuff like that as well. Yeah, that's what it originally was for. They've got a bunch of different varieties, and actually they've come out with a rub that's a sweetened-up version of their traditional seasoning. But um, my recipe calls for just the original yellow can and get it in most grocery stores. It's just a really, really great ingredient, um, again, especially for poultry. So, And, and then the sauce, um, ironically enough, <clears throat> excuse me, is uh, just Casey Masterpiece and some grape jelly and some hot sauce. Um, this recipe was inspired by a guy named Rick Salmon, who I uh, read the recipe over on another barbecue forum. And uh, a lot of people laugh about it, but um, this contest, or excuse me, the fundraiser I did was a great test for this uh, sauce recipe because people loved it. And then when I t- they were asking for the, for the recipe, when I told them what was in it, I had all the ingredients. I made the sauce right there on site, so I just showed them what was in it. And they couldn't believe it. And they, they, it was ironic and interesting that they could actually pick out the grape jelly once I told them it was in there. But it, it, mm-hmm. until then, it was just one of those. I knew there was just something in there, but I didn't <laughs> know what it was. So um, don't let the grape jelly scare you. It really does um, work some magic with the Casey Masterpiece. And kind of the hook to this recipe is we're, we're doing what I, what's called dry brining. A lot of people are familiar with brining, but this is just um, – brining in the sense that it uses the juice in the chicken rather than water to provide the brining um, osmosis. So basically you just coat the chicken with the seasoning, put it in the Ziploc bag and let it sit for 24 hours and it actually creates its own brine. Um, So again, it makes it really easy, especially if you're doing massive quantities, you don't have to deal with water and ice and keeping it cold and all that. Ziplocs are your friend. And so uh, then you just cook it at 325 till they hit about 170 and glaze them up and go. So pretty simple. Nice. We're talking with John Dawson. He is the guy that runs PatioDaddyOBBQ.com, and he's sharing a few of his current favorite recipes with us. That was the classic barbecue chicken drumstick that he actually did for a fundraiser to send one of his fellow statesmen down to the Jack Daniels. Uh, The other one that we had on tap, at least here in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame city of Cleveland and through a lot of places here across the country, seasons are starting to change, which doesn't mean it's getting warmer, unfortunately. It means it's getting colder. Now, with that, you obviously signify some type of comfort food. This one really hits the spot, a fairly simple beef stew. Yeah, the name is kind of key here. Um, I've found that most stew recipes fall in one of two camps. Either it's the throw everything in the crock pot, turn it on, come back in several hours and eat, or it's the drag out half of your kitchen and do it the old school, more traditional way. So this is a blend of the two where you start off on the more traditional side and then you use the slow cooker to do the the lion's share of the cooking. So another key thing about this ingredient and the way I am able to pull that off is by using some canned ingredients to provide the uh, base of the sauce. So you will see uh, some cond- a bunch of condensed soup in there, which is a really great ingredient. You have to be really careful with salt, though, when you use it because they are kind of high in sodium. So you'll see that there's not much salt in the recipe, and that's why. But uh, other than that, it's just you know your basic beef chuck. You cube it up, flour it, season it, and then brown it in the traditional way to get a, get a nice crust on the on the meat. And then you uh, deglaze the pan and basically dump all the rest of the ingredients in the crock pot. And fire it up, come back in a few hours, and voila, you got beef stew. And so it uh, was quite the hit here at the house, and it's been quite the hit on other Internet sites where I post recipes. So um, I'd encourage you to give it a shot. Um, Again, as always, there's pictures available on the website, and I'm always available for uh, questions. Uh, Just hit me up with the contact info on my site if you need any help. So, If you didn't have beef chuck as an option, is there another cut that you could use? 
Oh, uh, sure. You could use round. Probably use London broil, although I, that's probably a little expensive for this purpose. So just basically any any well marbled cut of meat that has a, a good beefy flavor to it. And obviously you're not going to use steak. I mean, it would be just a complete waste. But just any any large chunk of beef that's uh, fairly well marbled. That's a fairly simple beef stew. Again, this is John Dawson from Patio Daddy OBBQ dot com. He's a food blogger, one of the best out there right now doing this thing. Got great shots of all of his work there on his website. Wanted to ask you a quick question. I had Derek Riches on last week. We were talking about some of the turkey cookers. Obviously, Thanksgiving is coming up here in just a few short weeks, and he had mentioned a unit that you also had used called the Orion Cooker. Can you give us a brief 30-second synopsis of what you like or don't like about that cooker? Sure. Bottom line, it's an outstanding um, poultry cooker. I mean, chicken, turkeys, I've actually done the... uh, done the whole turkey in it instead of frying or instead of uh, traditional smoking it works great um it uses steam like Derek uh, mentioned there is a way to get smoke flavor in there although it's pretty subtle especially on larger pieces of meat like a turkey but it is an absolutely outstanding poultry cooker i mean i originally got it they were going to sponsor me um, to use it in competition for my chicken um i did a bunch of test runs with it and it never really panned out but i tell you what you can make a mess of chicken wings and uh, any other kind of chicken in that thing, and it's just a miraculous chicken cooker. So, um, other than that, I've done ribs in it, um, jelly rolled, and I've hung them. And uh, it does a really good job of cooking them if you if you like the fall off the bone style. Um, but again, it's 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 uh, downfall is is smoke flavor. It's really hard to get a good smoke in, in a traditional barbecue sense. But uh, other than that, great cooker, and you can find them on sale for as little as eighty bucks. I'd recommend it. Two thumbs up from two great independent uh, guys that are out there reviewing stuff and making food. Again, John Dawson, you can find his work at patiodaddiobbq.com. John, as always, appreciate you coming on the show to share some of these recipes. Thanks a lot. You bet. Thanks, Greg. It's John Dawson. Again, his website, patiodaddiobbq.com. John is always adding very unique recipes on his blog. Plus, he takes some high-quality food porn shots of his work as well, which we can all appreciate. Again, his website, patiodaddiobbq.com. Head over there to get some succulent ideas for recipes. Give me a quick timeout. When we come back, Michael Gerard from Wildwood Ovens will be on to talk about his unique brand of cooker. It's Rempy and you right here on the Barbecue Central Show. The future of barbecue is already here at thebarbecueguru.com. From the amazing guru that monitors and controls the temperatures of any charcoal, wood, or electric pit to the Caldera Tallboy knockdown smoker. Yes, it breaks down and stores flat, yet it's still a robust, sturdy, portable cooker and smokehouse. It also serves as an efficient temperature-controlled convection oven using wood or charcoal. The Tallboy is designed to fit all catering pans and can be used as a warming oven. You can cook in any style you choose, like ribs, chicken, jerky, vegetables, smoked cheese, whatever you want. Take it to KCBS competitions and unload it from the truck of your car. TheBarbecueGuru.com is where you'll find the Caldera 3-Bay Caterer. It's stainless steel and uses charcoal or sterno for chafing purposes. And it doubles as a 3-Bay sink or wash station with hot water and knocks down in seconds with no tools required for transportation and storage. The future of barbecue is here at TheBarbecueGuru.com. That's www.thebbqgu.com. RU.com or call 1 800 288 Guru. Forget going from site to site to get all your barbecue and grilling supplies and make your first and final stop at Fred's Music and Barbecue.com. In the market for a new barbecue pit, we have all the big name brands like Big Green Egg and more. As a matter of fact, Fred's is staffed by eggheads and carries all the parts and accessories for the Big Green Egg. More of a pellet head, you say? Fred's is the Pellet Grill Superstore with grills in stock from Traeger, Green Mountain, and Country Smokers from Louisiana Grills. Fred also carries smokers from Cook Shack, Bradley, and Weber as well, as well as a full lineup of charcoal grills. And once you're outfitted with your new smoker or grill, you'll find absolutely everything you need to make your barbecue or grilling experience a success. Fred is also the creator and distributor of Tasty Licks barbecue products, including their great line of rubs, spices, and sauces. you got to try them. You can also get your hands on a full lineup of marinades, accessories, lump charcoal, wood chips, pellets, chunks, and even the great grilling tools from Stephen Reichland of Barbecue U fame. Check Fred out on the web at fredsmusicandbbq.com or check out their fully stocked showroom in beautiful Shillington, PA. Get in the smoke. 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 It's the Barbecue Central Show. Once again, here's your host, Greg Rempe.
Welcome back to the Barbecue Central Show. I am your program host, Greg Rempe. Email address, bbqcentralradio at gmail.com. Barbecue Central Show hotline for your tips and questions, 216-220-0966. This portion of the show brought to you by D-Dog's Barbecue Rub, makers of rubs and sauces. If you don't want to pay the shipping charge, do yourself a favor, Centralites. Go ahead and email Darren, your one-off mom-and-pop shop that sells all of the barbecue and grilling stuff in your particular area. Send it to Darren, D-A-R-I-N, at ddogsbbq.com, and he will take it from there. Or, if you don't mind the shipping charges, ddogsbbq.com is the website to pick up all of your products from D-Dogs. Remember, D-Dogs Barbecue Rub is better than ketchup, as promised. Joining me now to talk about his brand of unique ovens and all this great outdoor live fire uh, grilling and barbecue stuff is a gentleman by the name of Michael Gerard, and he is owner of Wildwoods Fired Ovens and Barbecue. Michael, thanks for coming on the show. How are you doing? I'm, I'm doing fine, Greg. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, thanks for taking the time out to do it. You know, the show really focuses about outdoor live fire cooking in general, and sure, we have a tendency just because it's it's a barbecue show to focus on the low and slow art of barbecue and some type of offset barbecue pit or some of the upright bullet type smokers but we should not be inclined to disregard or not include these fantastic outdoor wood-fired ovens and before we actually get into the business side why don't you give us a little background about yourself how you got into the cooking and maybe if you have any barbecue ties well, about 15 years ago, I built an outdoor kitchen at my house. You know, California, we entertain outside quite a bit. So it's a big factor in our lifestyle. So I built the outdoor barbecue and always had left room for a pizza oven. At that time, nobody was really offering pizza ovens except one company. They weren't on the Internet at the time, and they imported it from Italy. And the cost was just through the roof. So I started looking at all other alternatives and put together a design, and we rapid prototyped it formed our castings. And then we stepped outside the box and used a little bit more modern castings than what they were doing in Italy. So we were able to develop an oven that was extremely lightweight, easy for the average homeowner, do it yourself or to assemble, and started attacking the, the residential market with it. Uh, Ten years later, we're pretty much on top of the game. Product's been well received, you all listed, and no looking back. So now we've branched out to the Brazilian barbecue line. Cooking on skewers is the technique there where we rotate premium cuts of meat, skewer it over a charcoal pit. Now, do you have some type of education background in cooking, or are you just somebody that likes to get after it? I have no formal training. I basically started cooking at the age of nine. We grew up in a household with nine kids. So typically, uh, watching the cooking shows all my life and learn by doing to my experience level. So this Brazilian-style barbecue, it seems to be becoming more and more popular as time wears on. When were you first introduced to it, and why did you think that this is something you wanted to kind of latch on to and offer to the public? Seven years ago, I was spending time down in Brazil visiting family that had emigrated there from Germany. And that's when I really saw what was going on with barbecue down there, and I was hooked from the from day one. So I thought, I came back here, and it wasn't just happening here. So I incorporated that into our product mix, uh, started producing replicate barbecues that are in probably 80% of all households in Brazil. Pretty much that's why every Sunday everybody sits around, just like most of the world, and barbecues a piece of meat, watches it cook, and uh, is united by fire and flame. Is there a specific cut of beef that is very popular? Well, typically the, the main cut that they use is called the picanha. It's cut out of the top round. If you take a, a leg of beef, you can get about three or four different muscle groups that they cut out of there. Uh, the top round where they use it, they leave the fat cap on there and they slice it and they kind of skewer it. So it's seasoned mainly just with coarse sea salt. Let the flavors of the meat do the talking. Talking with Michael Gerard, he's the owner of Wildwood Fired Ovens and Barbecue. You can find him at wildwoodovens.com. Michael, how is the Brazilian barbecue actually fired? What's the fuel for it? Typically, we're using lump mesquite charcoal as the as the heat source. Occasionally, toward the end of the cooking, we'll do a brisket for five to six hours. Toward the end, I like to finish with a piece of California oak. It gives a nice little flavor profile. Now, you're putting brisket on a skewer. Absolutely. Has anybody ever worried that all the great juices and all the moisture is going to somehow leak out of it because you've run a skewer through that piece of beef? Uh, typically, they, you know, I'm using a whole packers, Greg, so you know, we've got a good fat belt down the middle. They usually come out pretty good if you slow cook them and don't apply too much heat at the get-go. So between the Brazilian barbecue models and your wood-fired ovens, do you have a particular product brand that seems to be selling better 
than the other, or are you pretty 50-50? Well, the ovens are pretty much the most popular product because you can do extreme roasting in the oven. You can do grilling. It's fantastic for meat. So I mean, if, if you had to choose between one product, I would pick the oven because it's the most versatile. Uh, you start off getting the oven hot, make thin crust pizzas that bake off in about a minute to two minutes. And then after three or four hours of making pizzas and skillet roasting, you've got all that retained heat in the oven mass. It's like a sponge, Greg, so it just sits in there. And then that's when we'll take you know, one of our stone pots, put it in the oven, get it really hot. We'll take something like a pork shoulder, brown it off really good in the stone pot, remove it, wrap it in foil, and then slow cook it overnight in the retained heat of the oven. Uh, you get some of the most amazing pulled pork that way. Slow cooked uh, briskets come out amazing. It comes out to that shredded beef texture that everybody loves. And then, you know, things like the, the wild salmon on the cedar plank. Uh, it's a real dynamic tool to use, Greg, because you are just working with that fire. So that oven can actually retain heat overnight where you're not having to add a log or two during the course of the night to keep the temperature where you oh, want no. it. You know, you spread the coals out a little bit, and I mean, we slow cook it all the time. In fact, one of the most popular dishes, if you've ever been over to Italy, is the porchettas, where they do roasted pigs in there, and they, they'll start them out kind of slow to kind of get the fat layers melted, and they ramp the oven up a little bit toward the end to get the skin all crispy, and, you know, where do you hit it with the knife, just cracks right through it. So it's just amazing for uh, the show for your guest. Talking with Michael Gerard, he owns Wildwood Fired Ovens and Barbecue. You can find him at wildwoodovens.com on the Internet, and there's a number of videos on there. So if you're a new purchaser of these, you do a very good job step-by-step step at showing how to build the fire and kind of how to, how to set it up so you can kind of reduce that learning curve. Is there a particular region in the country that seems to be buying these more than anywhere else, aside from probably the California area where you're based at? You know, the people on the East Coast are pretty sharp about food, Greg. People are really coming on board with the fact that, hey, we've spent so much money on our house. Uh, let's add one more little thing and just stay there and entertain there. Uh, typically, they're putting them outside in a beautiful garden setting. Uh, and they're really enjoying their house a lot more. The kids are staying home and cooking with the family and friends. And uh, it's just a focal point now for a uh, gathering of uh, groups of people to you know, enjoy food and all that it brings. They're they're cast out of a refractory material, Greg. So it, it looks and resembles concrete, but it's designed to handle high temperatures. Here you see pictures of a steel mill, and they're pouring molten metal, and it's flying all over the place. Well, that mm -hmm. vessel that they're pouring the steel out of is not another steel vessel. It's an example of a refractory. We've just got, you know, there's hundreds of types of refractories. We have our own proprietary product that's just lightweight and still holds the heat extremely well. Is there a particular model on the ovens that sell very well? And what kind of a price tag are we looking at in a ballpark from when you order it and perhaps the shipping charges that would be tagged on with that mm -hmm. as well? Well, the most popular product, Greg, is our Milano, hands down. It's, it's the mid-range sized oven in our product lineup. It's going to take up more or less a four-foot by four-foot footprint in someone's yard or in their, in their kitchen. The price points out is twenty three ninety nine for that product. Uh, we're occasionally running product promotions on it, so check the website and and try to get in on a promotion if there's one happening. Average shipping tends to be about $380. Just keep in mind that when we're shipping out of state, there's no sales tax, so it really offsets the cost of shipping quite a bit. To put one of these in your house, is it a fairly extensive retrofit if you have an existing structure, or are people usually building a new house and then implementing this into part of that architecture? It's both. Uh, if they're implementing it to a new house, they usually pick our complete solution, which is a metal stand uh, with a heat insulating board and in the oven. So it, it makes it really easy for most people just to set it up in a house. Uh, existing construction, a lot of times people would go in and call us, hey, listen, we have this fireplace that we just really don't use or don't want. We'd rather have something in the fireplace location that's functional. So they're, they're looking at the oven as something that will provide ambiance but as well as be functional so they can actually, you know, stick something in there and actually cook while they're watching the flames. So uh, between those two, a lot of retrofitted interior fireplaces, a lot of times people just uh, make room for it. You know, in the small ovens, most people are, even in the large ovens, most people are only cooking one pizza at a time. So with that said, the small oven is a great choice for inside. Right, and again, just to point out, it's not just a pizza oven. You can do a multitude of other things in the oh, oven yeah. uh, from, yeah. uh, just aside from the pizza. Yeah, I mean, typically we'll we'll take a cast iron skillet and set it in there and get it hot, and then we'll 
come in with a handful of fresh asparagus that we just tossed in olive oil with a little salt and garlic. Yeah. And just it sears off in a couple minutes. And you pass that asparagus around, it's a little blistered on the ends and it's kind of a crisp, tender state. And I've had kids over that just literally hate asparagus and they try this and they go, wow, this is amazing. So that's kind of where it is. I mean, Freeform cooking, whatever you have in mind, you can cook it in that oven. Yeah, no sell job for me on that asparagus. I love that kind of stuff. Have you thought about in the ovens you can, and maybe it's just uh, my bad vision, but are there some type of precast, almost uh, like shelf holders in there where you could actually put racks in if you wanted to to do a bunch of ribs or a bunch of pork butts or something like that? Yeah, we have something called a Tuscan grill, and it's essentially a rack that sits inside the oven through the mouth. It doesn't penetrate too far in. Uh, there's a lot of heat that's just focusing around the opening in the oven and stuff, so that's a prime area to put a rack-type device in there. And if you put a bed of hot coals underneath it, Greg, everything just trips into the hot coals and is vaporized. That's, <laughs> that's what you call Tuscan grilling. So there is an add-on if you wanted to, if you wanted to do that. Absolutely. Yeah, right. Talking with Michael Gerard, he is the owner of Wildwood Fired Ovens and Barbecue. You're in Los Angeles, California, right? That's right. Right. And wildwoodovens.com is the website. Are people available to go down to the facility and actually see one of these in operation if they wanted to? Oh yeah, test we have it out? Uh, we have two. We have actually three kitchens uh, up and running. And essentially, what you can do is come down here and try any of our products and test drive the Brazilian barbecue for your restaurant. Uh, any of our wood-fired ovens are available to fire up. And we also have the classes, Greg. So typically if a homeowner uh, wants to shorten the learning curve, the class will provide him about three years of training in a three-hour period. We take you through oh. all the steps from firing up the oven to working with the fire, moving it around, doing skillet roasting, sautéing, of course, making the pizza dough and baking it off. And, it, you know, it, it's quite a class, Greg. Sounds great. Wish I was in California so I could actually sign up and take part in it. We're uh, talking with Michael Gerard. He owns Wildwood Fired Ovens and Barbecue in Los Angeles, California. Wildwoodovens.com is the web address for more information. Michael, appreciate you taking time out to talk to me about the Wood Fired Oven and Brazilian Barbecues. Continue success. Well, my pleasure, and thanks for, uh, thanks for having me on the show. Uh, my pleasure. It's Michael Gerard, everybody. If you didn't get a chance during our conversation to go ahead over to their website, take a look at the Brazilian barbecues, which are pretty cool items with those big skewers and whatnot, and the outdoor ovens. Look, for my money, if you're going to buy a $2,000 barbecue pit, a close, a gator, or whatever the big name brands are out there, it's probably worth your while at least to go and check out these outdoor ovens, these wood-fired ovens. Lots that you can do with them. Definitely a big conversation piece. Longevity, to be sure. These things will last years and years and years. I mean, it's all made out of some really great material. So longevity will be there. And you have that multi-purpose functionality with these ovens, too. So don't shortchange them. Go ahead and take a look at them if you were looking into investing into one of these big outdoor pits. $2,000 is probably where you're going to be at a jumping off point to get something of really high quality. And the ovens might not be an option that you thought of, so you want to check those out. Wildwoodovens.com is the website for you to check those out. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll wrap the show up one more segment. I am Greg Rempe, and you are listening to The Barbecue Central Show. The future of barbecue is already here at thebarbecueguru.com. From the amazing guru that monitors and controls the temperatures of any charcoal, wood, or electric pit to the Caldera Tallboy Knockdown Smoker. Yes, it breaks down and stores flat, yet it's still a robust, sturdy, portable cooker and smokehouse. It also serves as an efficient, temperature-controlled convection oven using wood or charcoal. The Tall Boy is designed to fit all catering pans and can be used as a warming oven. You can cook in any style you choose, like ribs, chicken, jerky, vegetables, smoked cheese, whatever you want. Take it to KCBS competitions and unload it from the truck of your car. The BarbecueGuru.com is where you'll find the Caldera 3-Bay Caterer. It's stainless steel and uses charcoal or sterno for chafing purposes. And it doubles as a three-bay sink or wash station with hot water and knocks down in seconds with no tools required for transportation and storage. The future of barbecue is here at thebarbecueguru.com. That's www.thebbqguru.com. Or call 1-800-288-GURU. 
Forget going from site to site to get all your barbecue and grilling supplies and make your first and final stop at Fred's Music and Barbecue.com. In the market for a new barbecue pit, we have all the big name brands like Big Green Egg and more. As a matter of fact, Fred's is staffed by eggheads and carries all the parts and accessories for the Big Green Egg. More of a pellet head, you say? Fred's is the pellet grill superstore with grills in stock from Traeger, Green Mountain, and Country Smokers from Louisiana Grills. Fred also carries smokers from Cook Shack, Bradley, and Weber as well, as well as a full lineup of charcoal grills. And once you're outfitted with your new smoker or grill, you'll find absolutely everything you need to make your barbecue or grilling experience a success. Fred is also the creator and distributor of Tasty Licks barbecue products, including their great line of rubs, spices, and sauces. You gotta try them. You can also get your hands on a full lineup of marinades, accessories, lump charcoal, wood chips, pellets, chunks, and even the great grilling tools from Stephen Reichland of Barbecue U fame. Check Fred out on the web at Fred's Music and BBQ.com or check out their fully stocked showroom in beautiful Shillington, PA. Get in the smoke. It's the Barbecue Central Show. Once again, here's your host, Greg Rempe. All right, we're back and wrapping it up here with one more segment. This is the Barbecue Central Show. I'm your program host, Greg Rempe. Thanks for joining me. Appreciate it. Hope you've enjoyed the show. Thanks again to my guests, Michael Gerard from Wildwood Ovens and John Dawson from Patio Daddio Barbecue. This portion of the show brought to you by Yoder's Smoky Mountain Barbecue. You know who they are, the leading online distributor of Meadow Creek barbecue equipment. Their barbecue smokers, pig roasters, chicken cookers, and grills are handcrafted in the Amish country of Lancaster, Pennsylvania, and their goal is to give you outstanding value for the price and help you enjoy easy and profitable barbecues for years to come. They also carry a complete line of wonderful barbecue rubs and barbecue sauces. Check them out online, won't you? SeriousBBQs.com. SeriousBBQs.com is the website to check them out. It's Yoder's Smoky Mountain Barbecue. All right, as I said, I'm going to go off the board here for the last few minutes. There is no question in my mind, and perhaps many of you might differ, that the premier sporting event that took place over the course of this past weekend did not happen on a collegiate football field Saturday. It did not happen on an NBA hard court. It did not happen on the National Football League fields that crossed our great country this weekend. No, no. Instead, it was a horse race at the Santa Anita Racetrack in California. The Breeders' Cup ran for two days, Friday and Saturday, and the crescendo of the whole event was the Breeders' Cup Mile, in which a filly was running against all male horses. Now, this was done once before this year, where Philly Rachel Alexandra, who is highly touted to be possibly horse of the year, and I can make an argument against that. And what happened was simply this. This is arguably the biggest race of the year. It is certainly the most lucrative race to win for sure, or to at least run in for sure. $5 million purse for that race. But you have a lady horse going up against males. Zenyatta is undefeated. Five-year-old horse, easily could have retired at the end of last year, gone to the breeding shed. But she came back for what is now definitely a horse of the year bid. And the race that she won on Saturday really typifies, defines, and caps what is probably one of the best thoroughbreds ever. Hands down, probably the best filly that has ever run. But on top of all that, this could be one of the best horses we have ever seen, not only for our generation, but potentially in a lifetime. If you miss the race, it's really worth going back to YouTube, not only watching the race happen, but hear the call happening, too. Trevor Denman called a great race. He's the track announcer over there at Santa Anita. And the fact that there was so much drama before the race actually got started, there was a late scratch at the gate where there was a horse out of just completely out of control. They couldn't get him railed back in, so he had to scratch late because he cut the back outside of his leg. They had to back all of the horses out and then reload again. Favorite Zenyatta broke on the wrong foot. I'm not going to talk about what that means. And true to form, she stayed behind the pack. She's a stretch runner. She likes to run right at the end when it counts. And three-quarters away through the far turn, Mike Smith... Brought her up, and she found a seam, and it was it was a brash move with Mike Smith taking Zenyatta. Just that little seam that opened up. She was five or six horse paths outside the rail, and as soon as she got clear daylight, she found her stride, 
Mike showed her the whip, and she won going away. If that race would have been an eighth of a mile longer, she probably would have stretched it out to five or six easy. To me, that was the defining sporting event during the course of the weekend, and it now will raise debate because Zenyatta is probably going into the barn and retiring that the best race never actually took place this year, and that would have been Rachel Alexandra going against Zenyatta to see who the best filly was and who the best horse was. This would have been the heavyweight fight that people would be looking for. That is a race that you could distinctly discern who the horse of the year was going to be for 2009. And for my money, she showed up for the biggest race that there was left in the course of the year, and she ran in it. And probably a lot of experts weren't giving her a fair shake as far as being able to win it, but she did. In true championship fashion. If you didn't get to see it, let me tell you, again, you want to YouTube it. Thanks again to my guests, Michael Gerard and Patio Daddio BBQ. That's John Dawson. We'll see you back next week in the smoke. I'm your program host, Greg Rempe, and proud U.S. American. Good night now.